Hello FCI, it's a great pleasure to be here today. My name is Dr. Chris Weatherburn, I'm a GP and clinical informatician in Dundee, Scotland. I'm going to tell you about a study that I performed looking at data quality in primary care across Scotland. Clearly data quality is important. This is for the primary purposes of running day-to-day -day general practice. That would be things like producing accurate referral letters, but also for secondary purposes, such as research, population health planning. We know from previous studies that data quality is variable, with osteoporosis rates up to a hundredfold different. In addition, there have been, there's been a CPRD study suggesting an increase in rate of under-recording of OA. If you look internationally, then even in Holland, for example, it's thought that 30% of cancers would be missed if you rely on the coding of primary care data. So what did I do? Well, I did two things. Firstly, a nationally purposefully sampled study in which I asked primary care teams about what their views are on data quality and what could be done to improve it. In addition, I obtained data from Information Services Division, which has been now renamed um, to Data and Intelligence, about quality outcome framework scores nationally. Now, as you may know, this QOF, the financial incentive, has been removed in Scotland, unlike England. Therefore, I wondered, could that be a good marker for data quality. So using the questionnaire and principles from a Cochrane systematic review, I managed to obtain 508 responses, 210 from practice managers, 182 from GPs, the rest from other primary care multidisciplinary team all of whom actually rank data quality as extremely important, which perhaps isn't surprising given that it's a voluntary study on data quality and we expect some self-selection bias. I got almost complete data from 901 general practices across Scotland. That is virtually all of them. This allowed me to go on to R and produce a graph like you are witnessing at the moment. This shows a spread of scoring for different QOF markers with the overall on the right. Important things to note are that it's normally distributed with a mean of around 77%. Sounds high, but England over a similar time frame actually achieved 96.5. So could this be a good marker of data quality? Well, the main thing I thought that would show would be looking at the software system in use. We do know from extensive evidence that the type of software a clinician uses really does determine how both satisfied they are with their system, but how much data entry they can readily do. And does it do it behind the scenes and things? At present, Vision and EMIS are the only two software suppliers in Scotland. And it's surprising to see that there was absolutely zero difference between Vision and EMIS as demonstrated in that chart. Um, and there was a good few practices from both, uh, about 486 had vision, 450, sorry, 486 had EMIS, 415 had vision. And the two sample Welch test, T-test was performed and as the graph would suggest, there was zero difference there. I also then thought, well, how about coders? So I asked practices, do you have a coder? And obviously, it seems now that most of them did. 195 had a coder, 63 didn't. But when you compare the QOF score, having a coder did not make a difference. In addition, if the coder was clinical or non-clinical, it did not make a difference. Interestingly, the um, 
practices who had at least one responder to the survey and those that didn't respond, there was once again no difference in overall mean QWOP score. So there was no statistical difference, which was a surprise to me. But practices should still consider using coders, as they can potentially free up GPs to spend more time with patients in specific need of their expertise. Next, I asked about voice-operated devices. Have you used one? 61% of respondents said they had. Now, the interesting thing I thought was, well, if you've used one, and if you haven't used one, would that change your likelihood of wanting to use one in general practice? And there was no statistically significant difference here. I mean, the numbers would be high enough to show them, but there just simply weren't, there wasn't a difference. And we can see that roughly two out of five people say they would use one, two out of five say they wouldn't, and one in five are undecided. I asked the people who were kindly completing this voluntary questionnaire about how they perceived secondary care coding. You can see that hospital letters tended not to have a code attached and outpatient clinic letters also didn't have a code attached. There were some statistically significant differences there in that GPs felt that less people would have an outpatient clinic code, code attached, whereas practice managers felt less had the hospital discharge letters code attached. But that really does show an important learning point across Scotland about how we could potentially work together with secondary care colleagues, educate perhaps them of the importance. Many may not know that the correspondence doesn't get seen by a clinician. And standardisation of letters and in particular, I think when the electronic health records are implemented widely in Scotland in hospital uh, care, that presents a great opportunity. I asked people to outline what they felt was the main barrier to data quality. You can see search systems that make it hard to search for particular codes ranked highest. It's interesting to see that practice managers rank the main barrier as limited training, whereas general practitioners felt it was the lack of time and administrative staff felt it was actually the complexity of cases seen. Should GPs code? 61% said they should, but the majority of that was data from consultations that they pe performed. There was certainly a large range of information suggested as to what GP should code. Software training. Well, most people have had software training, but most of them still want more. Now, that's very interesting. When you look at data entry training, there was a similar pattern, although less people had formally received data entry training than they had with GP software training. The GP software training tended to be by system suppliers at the time of implementation, whereas data entry training tended to be by a mix of people. Suggestions to improve data quality included training, codeless subsets, and secondary care coding better, along with as we may well expect, better IT systems and including a better IT search system. Most practices said that they had not implemented any policy to improve data quality. And when they said they had, it tended to be workflow optimization, dedicated coders, audits and guidelines. This summary, sh this word cloud shows the resources that people have found helpful to improve data quality. I would like to take the opportunity to thank all of those who contributed to the design of the survey and also Skimp and Snug who assisted with the survey distribution and 
ISD for providing data. Thank you very much. Oh.